Ponyl Player Review, A Tall, Refreshing Drink of Snake Oil, by Sam Matchkovich. One of my Ars Technica colleagues hadn't yet touched the Pono Player. The Neil Young Champion Portable Music Player, nearly one year out of its successful Kickstarter and finally ready to make a mainstream hullabaloo about higher resolution audio? And he'd already written a review. You know how every once in a while you buy the $40 bottle of wine instead of the $8 one, thinking you're gonna have a special dinner or something? Senior Reviews Editor Lee Hutchinson wrote over Instant Message. And you get home, and you make the salmon or the pasta or whatever and you light the candles? And you pour the wine, swirl it like they do in sideways so that it looks like you know what you're doing. You bring it to your lips and after smelling it, it smells like wine? You have a sip? And it's like, yeah, I guess this tastes good or something, but really it just tastes like wine? The Pono Player is kinda like that, but for music. Specs at a glance, Pono Player, screen, 2.5 inches, OS, Android 2.3, CPU, ARM Cortex A8, RAM, 256 megabytes, memory, 64 gigabytes, plus additional 64 gigabytes micro SD card included, Ports, micro USB, micro SD card reader, 2x 3.5mm headphone jacks, size, 5x 2x 1, 13cm x 5cm x 2.5m, weight, 4.6 ounces, 130 grams, battery, up to 8 hours, starting price, $399.99, I stole Lee's take, because the Pono Player's sales pitch has this exact sort of hurdle to deal with. Especially when contending with the likes of our staff, who know better than to buy into the advanced technology snake oil so often pushed on AV geeks. We've laughed off countless cables, circuit boards, speakers, and advanced displays. All smothered in gold in one way or another. That, when it came right down to it, didn't make a squad of difference or certainly not enough to command some ridiculous asking prices. To many, Pono's trying to do just that. You need this device to hear music the best way possible. In a music playing world where everybody has a perfectly good media player in their smartphones. And yet, Pono's push to deliver a not crazy expensive FLAC player has a surprisingly low number of peers. We are not foolish enough to describe a $400 player with no built-in speakers, by the way, as a bargain, but that's chump change compared to the bonkers price of $1,200 that Sony slapped onto its latest Walkman. If you're gonna buy a dedicated music player that costs as much as a TV, at least this one's only in the Vizio range. Plus, I consider myself the kind of customer Pono has in its sights. I'm a gadget hound, a rabid every genre under the sun music consumer and a person who doesn't want to build a massive, $1,000 S strong stereo system. Give me a nice pair of headphones and an effective, all-in-one way to max out the sound they receive, and I'll be in jazz knob heaven. Up until now, I've gotten my special airtime fix from my MacBook Pro, whose hard drive already has hosts of my music and whose headphone jack supports high res audio output of 96 kHz. If I'm really, Really paying attention, I can pick out the differences between a variable bitrate MP3 and a larger FLAC file of the same song on my Audio-Technica ATH-8900 headphones. Or I'd like to think that, at least. But it's rare that I fret over the bass resonance and cymbal shimmering of a song while going about my day. That's the perspective I came from when I finally located, purchased, and turned on a Pono player. Neil Young wants us to believe that higher res audio files played through his banana-colored Toblerone will improve our music-loving lives. I'm here to say that he and his team are kinda full of crap? But that doesn't negate the amount of quality I found in this little, weird-looking thing. Is that a Pono player in your pocket? As of press time, if you want to purchase a Pono player right now, and you didn't already put $300 of early bird discount faith into the hardware's Kickstarter campaign? Many of those units have shipped already. Your only option is to walk into a Fry's electronics store. We checked online to learn that a few Fry's locations near our staffers' homes had them in stock on January 22nd, 
at which point I rushed to my nearest supersized computer parts shop. I'd already placed an online order to ensure that a Pono would be waiting for me at the massive checkout line, so I wandered through the store to see what its display might look like. I was hoping for a cardboard cutout of Neil leaning back with eyes clenched shut in the middle of a guitar solo, only his guitar had been digitally replaced with a bright yellow Toblerone shaped thingy. Instead, I found nothing. After speaking to two clueless staffers, a third one told me that the guys in video games were talking about that thing, so I went to the game department, where a 19-year-old asked if I wanted to place an online order so that the backroom staffers could fish a pono out. We're supposed to get a full retail display pretty soon, I think, he told me. The pono player sold at Fry's comes in the most nondescript cardboard box possible, its only giveaway being a $399.99 price tag on one of its sides. Open that box up, and you'll find a far more handsome, wooden, Pono branded box. In a square shape, shockingly. That unfolds to reveal the player and its accessories, no cheapo earmids, which we kind of appreciated, to be honest. Why waste another $5 to $8 on headphones that Pono's target audience would detest? Pono Player's primary face contains a 2.5-inch touchscreen and three hard buttons, two for volume, along with a multi-function play-pause-skip power button. Their plus-circle-minus arrangement, with the shapes cut to be the whole of each button, is more attractive than a standard square or circle button design, but it gives the unit even more of a toy aesthetic than its yellow paint job already does. The body is covered in a smooth, rubberized plastic, meaning fingers can easily rub across its sides while still finding traction if the unit rests in your hand. The player is just a tad smaller than a grown-up hand. The primary face is the largest of the three, since, yes, the Pono player comes in an isosceles triangle shape. Pono's creators insisted that the triangular shape was necessary to fit all of the player's parts. But after reviewing a recent teardown, we wonder if the capacitors, the major culprit for Pono's circuit board bulge, could have been repositioned for a flatter design without increasing the size all that much. Want to use studio quality headphones? They better come with a 3.5mm adapter, because Pono doesn't support any larger jacks. If you happen to own a pair of headphones with two balanced XLR connectors, you can plug them both in for supposedly improved sound. Else, the two 3.5mm jacks on this device are meant for friends who want to listen to an album on their own headphones at the same time. The hardware comes packed with 64GB of onboard memory, and the box includes a 64GB microSD memory card, as well. Should you want to expand your memory, you can add a 128GB card. We took the Pono player on the go for an entire day, which proved to be a bit of a logistical nightmare. This isn't just a bad device to put in a pocket. The triangular shape feels noticeable and obnoxious in your pants pocket. But it's also lousy in a messenger bag, as the creators elected not to include a hardware hold button of any sort. As a result, the volume and multi-function buttons got pressed on a regular basis during our testing meaning this thing reached its maximum, incredibly high volume level so quickly that we had to rip earbuds out. Thus, we soon opted for handheld use, which was fine enough in terms of quickly adjusting volume, skipping current songs, or pausing. Though we couldn't disable the screen turning on every time we tapped the volume dial, and turning the screen off required holding the multi-function button down for way too long, so we reduced the auto-sleep timer accordingly. The best thing we could say about on the Go Pono use was that the unit fit neatly into our palm and felt like a media player version of a drumstick, and when this thing was cranked to high volume on a good song, we couldn't help but flick our wrist along and rock out in public. It's a small music world, after all, our Pono player came preloaded with only one song? Unsurprisingly, a Neil Young cut? So we visited a variety of online shops to grab MP3 and FLAC editions of albums. In the case of the Pono Player, we had to use its ugly but serviceable app to buy and download albums, but we were ecstatic to find that we didn't need to touch the app at all to load other music into the hardware. 
after you connect a Pono player to a computer, both its internal memory and any attached memory card appear as folders that you can drag and drop new tunes into. Once you disconnect the Pono player, it will automatically recognize and add new albums, in FLAC, ALEC, WAV, IF, MP3, and unprotected AAC formats, that you'd loaded manually. Pono Music World, we should note, includes a horrible storefront that looks ripped from an early 2000s music sharing app like LimeWire. We didn't waste any time switching to Tracks Web Storefront for our browsing purposes, especially since we wanted high res music for testing, and Tracks Simple Browsing System had easier ways for us to quickly see which albums were sampled as 192kHz-24 bit audio. The song selection on both sites overlaps plenty, with the unsurprising exception of Neil Young and his band's remaining Pono exclusive and both sites charge a relatively hefty premium for their larger albums, starting around $18 an album and jumping all the way to $24. In large slash this is the extent of how Pono Music World presents new tunes to shoppers. You get two crawls to pick through in a search bar, along with a few lists of top sellers underneath. Considering Pono's firm sales pitch about us needing the highest raise audio available, we were surprised to not find any highest resolution only filter in its internal storefront. This is where Pono's snake oil really begins, because when you play any 192-24 songs on the player, it rewards you by... We're not kidding. Turning on a little blue neon light, this, by the way, doesn't happen if your 192-24 songs didn't come from Pono's storefront. Those are apparently not 192 enough, the player's touchscreen interface, which displays Pono's custom Android fork, is serviceable enough. It sorts your library by performing artist, album, playlists, or song title. You'll need to flip to the song section to enable shuffle mode, if that's your bag. Only the album list has any visual flair, in the form of album covers. To switch from your current song or album to another one, you must tap on spots whose screen footprints are the tiniest bit too small for our liking. And that's just in portrait mode. Those taps are even tougher in landscape mode, and since the Pono player has been designed to ideally rest in that mode on a desk or next to a stereo, we found ourselves frequently needing to pick the hardware up in our hands and wait for its screen to rotate just to get new tracks going. Thankfully, the player's ability to switch tracks and search through audio doesn't have any hitches or pauses, but that doesn't quite make up for the screen's sluggish response time. SSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS
was chosen because these albums had received supposedly painstaking care in their super sampled remasters, and also because their volume levels, as compared to recent CD releases, weren't wildly different. That's the biggest inconsistency any Pono tester will find when trying to compare versions of, say, Neil Young's Russ Never Sleeps. Most of Neil's offerings, and other stuff we came across in our HD music acquisition, had wildly different volume levels and even holy remix stereo separation in their newer versions. That stuff will sound better on any device, really. When it came to comparing albums that were nearly identical, save their sampling rates, we sometimes heard an opportunity to pick out sibilance in a vocal or the ringing sound of a cymbal and say, ooh, there's the higher res version. We were right on those calls every single time. But we had to really, really pick at the audio, asking for frequent replays of short snippets, to make those calls, and some albums, particularly Ella, gave us very few obvious moments like that to work with. We did notice a difference between songs rendered through a Pono player and the same ones on either a stereo or a MacBook Pro. Mostly, we preferred on the Pono where the bass sat in the mix, which we noticed was less of a bitrate issue and more of the Pono player's onboard mix of preamp and digital audio converter, DAC. And we confirmed this preference after countless volume adjustments to make sure the Pono wasn't just tricking us with volume bumps. We should point out that this bass improvement was most noticeable on pop rock albums. Jazz and classical have plenty of bass action going on, but in those cases, it was actually the higher end sounds, like an endlessly banged hi-hat, that sounded noticeably brighter and crisper compared to other sound sources. Our verdict, to clarify our ultimate sonic takeaway, we noticed improvements, however slight, with higher res audio on a Pono player at low to medium volume during our workday than we did with the same files on a MacBook Pro. The same couldn't be said for the resolution of the audio in question, however. Certainly when listening casually but sometimes even when we were paying careful attention. And we are fine with that. As most audio obsessed geeks will tell you, research and tests about high res audio tend to make Neil Young and his cool aid salesmen sound like fools. In many cases, higher rate sampling can make audio sound worse, go down a real frequency rabbit hole here if you want, hell, Mr. Young must know by now that his older, degraded ears are less likely to pick up higher range frequency audio than any of his potential customers. We're not interested in rebuying our entire music libraries yet again to cash in on some very unsound assertions about audio sampling. We're pretty happy with our CD quality collection which we've purchased from reputable outlets or ripped ourselves with good old lame, and we'll probably continue being satisfied with our smartphones as a way to listen to tracks on the go. That being said, we think $400 for an all-in-one, 128GB, expandable to 196GB, player with a quality preamp and DAC solution, as a quality piece of home kit that we can toss in a bag and enjoy at a friend's house or in a hotel room, is a reasonable price for something to max those songs out with. We could see a Pono Player 2.0 being a killer device, honestly, especially since the iPod Classic has exited the space, leaving room for $300-ish high-end dedicated music players. Worry less about being particularly portable, we say, and add features like wireless audio transfer, so we can leave a Pono plugged into a home stereo a suction grip for placing on surfaces like card dashboards, a slightly bigger screen, and a damned hold button, and we just might throw this overpriced bottle of wine into our messenger bags after all. The good, quality preamp and DAC do the heavy lifting and making music output sound quite good, whether using highest res audio files or merely high enough res. Adequate default capacity of 128GB, expandable to 196 gigabytes as needed. Fine weight and size for handheld use. The bad, no amount of testing made 192 kHz 24-bit FLAC audio sound noticeably better than high quality MP3S. Sluggish touchscreen is made worse by interfaces tiny, tappable details. The 8-hour battery life doesn't quite outpace an old iPod classic. How do you feel about banana yellow? The ugly, the lack of hold button renders portable Pono you 